Hey, look, it's a fling Frankenstein. Here's a look at NECA Toys, Predator Concrete Jungle Deluxe Stoneheart Predator. Stoneheart was once an honorable warrior, then he was captured by Borgia Industries and subjected to a series of brutal augmentations that would see the towering predator brainwashed and turned into a cyborg. As his first combat test, he would be dispatched to end the ravage-fueled rampage of his former clan brother Scarface. Before his conversion to mind-controlled cyborg, Stoneheart was an enforcer and pack leader of the Darkblade clan. Renowned for his size and brutality, he shunned ranged weaponry, preferring to take his prey literally hand-to-hand foregoing even the traditional wrist blades in favor of hand-mounted daggers. His name was earned from his practice of gruesomely dismantling his prey, including a member of the rival clan who challenged his honor and accused him of widely reviled genetic augmentation to gain his fearsome size. Alongside his fellow unwilling Bad Blood's long spear and swift knife, Stoneheart would meet his fate at the hands of the redeemed Scarface, who fought the giant and finally delivered him to an honorable death. Just before we get a closer look at the Stone Cold Stone Heart Predator, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide this sample that we're about to have a look at. Grabbing the tape measure now just to see how tall he stands. He's a pretty big boy, but just how big? Stoneheart stands, taking the tape measure right to the very top of his head, about 10 and a quarter inches in height. And that works out to be a figure that's almost 26 centimeters tall. The figure seems to be sharing a lot of the mold that we may have gotten before with the Assassin Predator from the Predator line. This would have been a prime opportunity, though, to be able to bring in the Assassin Predator, but just by the space of what that figure was taking up on my shelf, I ended up selling both of the ones I had in my collection. Not to mention as well, I wasn't a big fan of the Predator anyways. So unfortunately, I can't bring that figure in for comparisons. But what I can do at least is just to show you how tall the scale of this figure is with a regular Predator figure. So for this, I'm going to bring in the recently looked at Shaman Predator. What a great looking figure that is. I can also bring in a figure that we haven't brought in for a while. Here's just what he looks like next to an unmasked Jungle Hunter, who is even still smaller than the Shaman Predator we looked at before. In both the cases I've provided on the sides here, the figures are only going on, only about to the bicep section of Stoneheart Predator. So like I said, he's a pretty big Yaucha. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't even sold off the Assassin Predator. Well, I didn't like the movie. I thought the figure that NECA had put out was pretty cool. Again, he was just taking up way too much space, which is ultimately what's going to still happen here with Stoneheart Predator. But rest assured, I will be finding a space to put this guy down. If you like the idea of a Predator mixed with Frankenstein's monster, then this is right up your alley. He does have light-up features, which is pretty cool as well. I think, in fact, maybe what we'll do first is we'll look at the accessories, then I'll show you the light features. Oh, you're such a tease. I know, sometimes I am. Looking first, though, he comes in clear with a pair of wrist blades. Now, I say he actually comes with a pair. He comes with two pairs, two pairs, which seem to be identical to one another. There doesn't seem to be markers anywhere li listed or printed here on the blades that tell you exactly what side they're supposed to go on. But being the fact that they all, all automatically look like they're carbon copies to one another, I think you're probably fine to use them on either side. And one side is no right, more right than the other. Uh, the blades themselves are made of pretty thick plastic. Not the kind of plastic I think I would be worrying about breaking necessarily. <laughs> I'm going to be doing this anyways with the blades. Who's going to be doing that? But anyways, these blades grabbing the figure and spinning it around here on the back of his gauntlet he has these two little slots there's one there hopefully you can see it there's the other one right there simply just take the blades you already know how this is going to work and there you can see there's these two little lips of plastic they fit so conveniently into those grooves that he then holds the blades now the neat thing about these is unlike some of the earlier avp figure Predator figures we've looked at where those blades were permanently in place. You can decide for yourself. You don't even have to use necessarily two of them. I'll slot two for right now. Just plug them in. I find the one actually is the one that's closest to his armpit is a little harder to get in there. And you can actually see the way they've done the blades. They kind of intersect and meet in the middle. It's pretty cool. But because they're not permanently there, you're not married to the idea that you have to keep the blades there. You can actually just decide for yourself to have one. 
or you can decide for yourself to have none. It's entirely up to you. And then simply you would just rinse and repeat the steps to have it on the other side there as well. Moving those out of the way, the figure currently has a pair of gestured hands. I always like predators when they have gestured hands. And then you can see that he does have, in favor of those gauntlet blades, he does have these spiked gloves. Almost fingerless gloves, but they're not completely gloves. So I guess we're not technically going to count them as fingerless gloves. But they're basically like just a little guard that he has on tops of his hands. If you don't prefer the gestured look, though, let's get this guy to stand here. Then he comes with a pair of closed fists for good close quarters punching. Although I think the blades are going to be hitting the skin long before the fists do. The hands themselves don't have a lot of paint to them. They've at least gone and painted the fingernails. But you can see the blades are nicely painted. They're done in very nice silver, matching the gauntlet blades that I just finished putting into his forearms. I'm going to put those aside. The figure does also have one last thing. And this involves me actually having to pick up the figure and get a closer look at it. Head sculpt wise, very cool looking figure indeed. Again, I see a lot of the influence here from the Assassin Predator, whether some of that head ended up finding its way, at least to the retooled mold that we get here. He's gone away completely, missing his, as you can see, his his, uh, his hair, his dreadlocks. I was drawing a bit of blank there. His dreadlocks, as you can see, completely gone away. Instead, he's actually got all these little circular spears of black. But he does also have like these, these little mandible pieces. So if you don't want necessarily his mouth closed shut like this, just to see and just show you guys what that looks like. You know, I have to admit, because he does actually, he's missing the dreadlock hair behind him, which aren't, isn't technically necessarily hair. hair. I think they're sensor tubes or something like the, the predators use to kind of sense their whereabouts. Somebody actually mentioned that in the comment section down below. It's not technically hair. I would describe it more like as dreadlock hair. But because he's missing it here, his head seems naturally a lot smaller in design. I think for that reason, I'm leaning more to the idea of actually displaying with the mandibles open. And to do that, if you ever own the Hot Toys classic Predator from the Predators movie, kind of the mandibles work the same way. You're just going to yank them out. You remove them on the sides. Do the, uh, yeah, same on the other side. And then you're going to get these replacement mandibles that you pop back into place. And for me, at least, just because, again, he doesn't have the extra space on the side being occupied by his hair, because he doesn't have that, I think I'm more leaning to the idea of actually displaying him with the mandibles open. And that gives him quite a cool looking look as well. He has some really interesting veinage. Let me just draw your attention to the inside of his mandibles there. They're slightly slick. It's looking as if they're slime and covered in mucus. The coloring is really good on this guy. So those are all his accessories, but I did promise that I was going to actually show you guys the light-up features on this guy. He actually has two. First, you're going to want to detach the top of his dome here carefully. And why I say carefully, too, is when you remove it, there's no battery cover covering over the button cell batteries that are on the figure itself. The buttons in question, by the way, are LR626 batteries, which I think are similar to AG1 batteries. I haven't tried AG1 batteries, but they are very similar in size. But don't worry, though, the LR626 button cell batteries are already installed on it, both the top of his head and the back of his body as well. Still, though, when removing the top of his dome, I did it too quickly the first time, and actually one of the buttons popped out, the button batteries popped out from the spring. And luckily, I was able to find it. I do wish that they could have put a, a cover over top of this, just because, again, if you're moving the figure around, you'd hate to have one of these dislodge. And when you take this out, unknowingly end up losing one of the batteries inside. But the light-up feature is actually just above it. Here's the switch. We're going to switch it on. Hope, hoping not to blind you guys while doing this. And then the inside of the dome, as you can see, is a translucent blue plastic. Because then you put that on top of it, it illum illuminates so very nicely. It's a pretty bright light, too. It's one of the brightest lights I think we've gotten from a Predator figure, or really anything that NEC has illuminated on their figures. It's one of the brightest up there. He does also have one other thing that lights up, and though nowhere featured on the actual box as to where that lights up, they only show you on the bottom, bottom of the box an image of what the top of the head looks like. Okay, so you already know where that's supposed to go. But then the image next to it is only just a circle. So you really have to kind of guess as to where that's going to be. Let me show you where that is. Behind them back, where the turbines are, this one right here, you'll notice, has a little cut line here, a seam line. Whereas this one does not. It does, but it looks like clearly it's been glued or molded in place. You want to detach this one here. And again, careful while doing it. The button batteries are still in there. 
This button battery, by the way, did fall out and ended up falling inside of here. I ended up having to, I think, take a pair of tweezers and try to fish that out. But there's the light and there's the little switch. Switch this on and put this back in place. And it illuminates this whole back section and it also illuminates, it manages to illuminate this area too. When you also flip around the Stoneheart Predator, it also illuminates an area of his chest as well. And that gives you a really cool look. Where they haven't actually illuminated it is the part in the areas of his belt, the lower areas here in his legs, and the areas also in his arms. But they colored them close enough, at least in the blue, that you can believe that they would be light up as well. They probably could have made these just a little bit lighter, just to be matching the color that they've used here. But at least they did actually paint this in a similar fashion, so it always also looked like it's illuminated on Stoneheart Predator. Nah. Not likely going to be having this for the majority of this review all on because I know I'm going to be draining the batteries while talking away. So let's go ahead and just switch these off right now. Just detach that. These, by the way, there's four pegs kind of making an upside down table and they plug into the holes provided on the sides. Just, um, just turn that off. Carefully fit that back in place. You want to be careful, of course, because you don't want to break any one of those pegs. And then we'll do the exact same thing with the top of his head. Just carefully again, removing it switching it off, and then putting that back in place. Suppose they could technically use the magnets as an option, certainly, to have this part of his head stay in place. But honestly, the pegs work pretty good on their own. I guess there's no need to really necessarily bring magnets into the mix. Now, as for the rest of the design of the body here for Stoneheart Predator, again, I really like the augmentation that they've added to him. He's got what looks to be very painful entry points here, where you can see that they've added mechanical portions to it. So they've got these sort of tubes that run to the front of his body. You can see how they've embedded themselves into the flesh itself. The flesh or the skin of the predator is noticeably a lot redder in that area than it is for the rest of his body. The rest of his body is actually quite pale, really, making use of a lot of whites, blues, and like off-colored grays. The back section, though, is really where you see a lot of stuff happening here. He's got all these tubes. First of all, he's got these turbine fans. I can only imagine that they're turbine fans likely spinning around. They obviously don't spin here on the figure. But then just below that, he's actually got a pair of tubes that run out the back of his body and connect to the sides of his arms. Technically, only one of the tubes connects to his elbow, just below his elbow. The other tube actually runs down to the bottom of his leg, seemingly to illuminate this section of his belt. The tubes themselves are pretty soft and plastic, and they seem to give you enough mileage as well. So when it comes to moving actually his arms... They're not limited in the sense that if you move them too far, you're feeling like you're going to be breaking the tubes. I can actually give him, well, I can have him putting his hand up asking a question, and the tubes are still pretty loose. Uh, like the lower half of his body, again, is bringing a lot of additional vein painting that they put in, in, put in there. You can see the darker kind of rooted grays that they've added to the legs are also matching there to the, the way he's got in their body as well. Again, I really feel like a lot of the body is probably used over from the Assassin Predator before really wish I had still that figure. I can actually bring him out for comparisons. His loincloth has actually been more swapped out with something more technical, uh, as it certainly looks like it's more augmented pieces added to his body. The back actually still retains a little bit of a loincloth, so if you are missing a loincloth on your Predator, you'll be happy at least to know that it's still on the back here of Stoneheart. And then the back of his legs, again, very much more just mechanical parts, the Predators that we're used to seeing in armor instead. One thing I actually want to talk about uh, is this leg here, this more specifically this foot here. The foots are on hinges, so when it comes to the articulation that we'll talk more about in a moment, I find this one foot, I don't know if it's a bit on the more looser side, but I find when I'm putting down Stoneheart, for example, he wants to lean a lot forward. You kind of have to always keep, you'll probably see me doing this a lot, maybe even in this review. I have to kind of level his feet, flatten his feet and just bring back the figure's body. He, feels, he always feels like he wants to be leaning forward, maybe because he's got so much, a lot, a lot of extra weight also in the front of his body as well. For the articulation, though, for Stoneheart, his head's on a ball joint. One could say it could rotate all the way around. One would be almost correct by that. The head does look up only just by a little bit, does look down only just by a little bit, and you can also rock it back and forth. The shoulders, even though technically he does have tubes connecting to his elbows, he still can successfully pull off about a 90 degree angle bend. Take the arms, you can rotate them forward and back. Obvious reasons you're going to be wanting to rotate them all the way around. No 360 turns on this guy. I guess you could technically go to a boat there. I'm already noticing this is starting to get tight though. Don't do that. Don't do that. He has no bicep swivel, but he does have at least an elbow swivel that actually serves as also two hinges in his elbows. So you can get a double bend on his elbow there. 
hands rotate also back and forth. These blades, by the way, as also when you saw when you looked at the swappable hands, the blades are actually attached to the hands, so there's really no issue with rotating the hands all the way around. The upper torso is on a ball joint. The lower torso, as I'm pointing to his abdomens right now, is also on a ball joint. His legs are on ratcheted joints, which is good because, of course, you got a lot of top heaviness for this figure. A lot of weight up below here, so you really want to have good, tight joints on the legs. He does have double hinges on his knees, which are a little tighter on this figure. And then when we already talked about before, his ankles, just this angle more than this one here, always causes, at least for my figure, the figure to feel like he's always either leaning forward or just completely falling forward. Other than that, though, it's just a great looking figure. Again, I looking at this figure only just reminds me more so that I probably should never have parted ways with my assassin predator. Even all honestly, I, even though I didn't like the movie, I like the look of that predator. I think I just ended up parting ways with it because he was just way too big. I'm not going to make that same mistake when it comes to Stoneheart Predator. Not only is it a big, beefy looking predator, but I like the idea that they actually found a way to incorporate light up functions, not only in his head, but in his body and his back of his body as well. While I'm not usually keen on the idea of, quote, monster predators, it seems to be a continued trend in the movies, at least, that every new predator movie that comes out always has to have an altered predator, either changing the size, changing the design, or just changing what we're so used to seeing with a predator. But you know, when it comes to actually figures, I'm more willing to buy into the idea that there's these augmented predators running around. And while I may not like it actually in the movies, I do like it actually as figures. Case in point here, Stoneheart Predator. The design of Predator alone, just by having tubes running into his body, it looks painful to look at, but it also looks like a cool looking figure to be putting on the shelf. Again, I really like the touch that NECA did by adding a light up feature in there. At the beginning of this review, in fact, I only lit up the top of his head, but the back of his body can also be removed to expose a battery cover. Well, actually, a place where the batteries are stored. There's no real battery cover that's on there, but then you can also illuminate his body as well. They have in the places where they can't obviously illuminate because you can't put batteries everywhere. They did find the way to at least paint those parts in a similar blue. It doesn't obviously illuminate as well as the parts that are lit by batteries, but it does a good enough job at least carrying over the colors of the blue. I like the off coloring of this guy. He just looks like a walking undead, a, really a predator of this size. Normal predators would already be a problem, but when you're dealing with a predator of this size with this much augmentation going on, it makes for not only a scary looking predator, but a pretty cool looking predator as well. What do you guys think of Stoneheart Predator? Let me know down below in the comments section. Have you had the chance to pick up this figure? Or if not, based on this review, is this a figure that will be shortly being added to your collection shelf? Let me know down below in the comments section. And as well, I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide this sample of the Predator Concrete Jungle Stoneheart Predator that we can have a look at in this video. Um, also as well, if you guys enjoyed this video, speaking of which, why not hit with a like? But if you're loving the content you're seeing, and let's just say that you're new here, you stumbled onto this channel perhaps with this review alone, and you guys want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the ever crucial subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. I know it always sounds like I'm always talking about singing the praises of the bell notification. In a perfect world, I would love to just be able to say, hit that subscribe button down below, and there would be more than enough to have all my videos showing up in your subscription feed. YouTube, on the other hand, seems to think differently, and you have to not only hit the subscribe, but you also have to turn on the bell notification, because if not, you may not be seeing all the videos that I'm putting out on a regular basis. Speaking on a regular basis, there are definitely going to be a lot more NECA reviews coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.